Hi folks. In many of my videos in reference to Sea Shepherd, I do a lot of name calling. Why I call them every name under the sun. Negative names some may interpret that to be as. And if you have not watched my Sea Shepherd related videos from the beginning in the last three or four, or four years, some of these names may confuse you and you say to yourself, gee, why did he call them that? Good question. Allow me to go through some of these adjectives, these nouns that I assigned to Sea Shepherd. Well, the head of the cult group there, uh, what's his name there, I call him Captain Kangaroo. And here's the reason why. It's not because that he enjoys a lot of support from the nation, the continent of Australia. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that when I first saw a picture of him, I says to myself, Golly G. Willikers, that's Captain Kangaroo! Captain Kangaroo had a children's television show in the 1950s. That's when I was a baby, kids. And I would watch television and enjoy Captain Kangaroo's show. So when I saw this guy, the head of Watson, the head of Watson, the head of Sea Shepherd, why he, I said, that's Captain Kangaroo. We had the good Captain Kangaroo of the 50s and this Captain Kangaroo of the 21st century. The yin and the yang of the Captain Kangaroos. Another name I call him is Admiral Beauregard Watson. His uh, cultist members in the cult, they elevated him to Admiral because he has a few vessels. So I call him Admiral out of respect. Now the reason why I call him Beauregard, it's a southern name in the United States because there was a photograph of Captain Kangaroo in his office on that vessel and in the corner was a Confederate flag, the Confederate States of America. So since he respects the Confederate States of America, I decided to give him a Confederate Southern name, Beauregard. That's why it's Admiral Beauregard Watson. <laughs> now another name is the Paulus. That's a combination between Paul and Wallace that was put together by people in the Faroe Islands. They started calling the Paulus, and so have I, because I think the name is unique, humorous, and fits. Now, I refer to the cult members of Sea Shepherd as girly men. It has nothing to do with their sexuality. I do not know what their sexuality is. I do not care to know what their sexuality is. It has to do with the once governor of California referring to the Democrats in the state legislature as girly men, basically men behaving like cowards. So that's why I call them girly men. Not for their sexuality, but the fact that they're a bunch of cowards. And the reason why I call them cowards is because of their aggressive behavior against docile people when they have a docile behavior against aggressive people. That's a coward, kids. Then I refer to their vessels as rust buckets. And that's because a couple of years ago, when they were in Canada with one of their Steve Irwin ships, the earlier one, and it got confiscated by Canadian authorities, the Canadian Coast Guard <laughs> sent me photographs of, those, of the vessel. And it was rusted. The bolts were rusted. The thing was rusted through and through. So that's why I started calling it a rust bucket. The term rust bucket is an old sea term for rusty ships. They call them rust buckets. Speaking of which, I also refer to it as a garbage scow. A garbage scow is a barge. At one time they used to load garbage on it, cities on the coast and bring the barge, tow the barge out into the ocean and dump the garbage there, calling it a garbage scow. And that's what their vessels, I say, are garbage scows because of the cultists are not rather, as, as to my est estimation, are not one of the cleanest people on earth. So that's why it's a garbage scow. The term echo terrorist is referred to by them, of them, by me. And that's a term that the United States FBI labeled them as saying that their behavior was that of echo terrorists. And they are in their behavior as echo terrorists. Culinary imperialists. I call them that because as imperialists, they try to tell some other groups of people what they should and should not have on their plates, on their menu. 
culinary imperialists, a cult. I refer to them as a cult. And that's because the followers follow the cult leader blindly, without asking, without questioning the nonsense he tells them to, to undertake, such as the dangerous behavior against the Japanese mariners, such as diving in the cold waters with the strong undercurrent of the Faroe Islands. The trust fund babies are cultists following the cult leader. Then I refer to the cold guardians, part of the Sea Shepherd group, as having fleas, bedbugs, lice, and yeast infections. That's them. All four of them. Where did I get that from? I saw photographs of them the last year when they were in Taiji harassing the good people. When they were around Taiji desecrating religious monuments. And I, look, I looked at these photographs closely and that's what I saw. People who were filthy, disheveled, and disgusting looking. That by looking at them you had to question their bathing habits and their lack of bathing habits would only lead to bed bugs, lice, fleas, and yeast infections. Ah, oh, folks. <laughs> I hope you I have to clear that up about the names I use in reference to the cult group Sea Shepherd. Alright, we'll see you. God bless you. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Peter Helmethead. I referred to him as Cabin Boy. <laughs> and that's the reason for that is because the Cabin Boy. Back in the olden days, on the man of war, the ship of the line of the British fleet in their glory days, the lowest of low was the cabin boy. That's him, kids. Peter Helderhead. All right. We'll see you. God bless you. God bless America. And God bless the nation you happen to be in. See ya.